Hi, I'm Robert Jordan, and I went on the Galveston mission trip at the beginning of the summer. And what we did was help uh, repair a house, and we put uh, caulking up and siding, whatever, trim. Put trim around a window and caulked it and painted it, make it look all pretty. Then we took a wall down, made make a room bigger, and um, then we went to the community center and did a street camp for the kids, which was a VBS, and we just hung out with them, loved on them. From this mission trip, I came to understand that everyone has their own story, and that you just have to take the time out of your day to learn that story and get to know the person more. And how I'm gonna apply this to my life is just not looking at someone and being like, oh, they're different from me. I, I'll just talk to people that are more like me. To go and talk to them, learn their story, know their background and stuff, and so I can connect with them better. Yeah, isn't it amazing how a man can find himself alone? Calling to the darkness for an answer that he's never known. Yeah, isn't it amazing how God can take a broken man? Yeah, let him find a fortune, let him ruin it with his own two hands. And he climbs on up the hill. On the rock on which he stands, he looks back at the crowd, he looks down at his hands and he says, I am a difference maker. Oh, I am a difference maker. Oh, I... Hi, my name is Mary Mullally and I also went on the Galveston mission trip. This is my third year to go and I experienced God through the kids and just how they acted around us and how we could show our love to them and just see how happy they were. What I took away from this mission trip was that you need to love everyone equally no matter their background or how they treated you. You just need to treat them with the same love that you deserve. I'm going into high school as a freshman and I would like to carry what I've learned from this mission trip into high school with me no matter what I'm doing or what activities just to show everyone the love that they deserve. Alright guys, we're going to talk about Vacation Bible School. Fred, do you remember what the theme? Workshop of Wonders. Workshop of Wonders, excellent. And Evan, when we talked about doing things with God, what was one of the things we were going to do with God? Walk with God. Walk with God, that's right. And we did some Bible stories every day, right Madison? Do you remember yes. one of those? Um, I remember when Jesus fed 5,000 people with only two loaves of bread and five fish. Exactly, that was a pretty awesome miracle. And we had a lot of fun at Vacation Bible School, but we also raised money for something important. Do you remember what that was? For natural accidents. Yeah, like a natural disaster. Like tsunamis, tsunamis, tsunami, volcanoes, earthquakes. Right, or a sinkers, flood. Sinkers. Tornadoes, absolutely. Do you remember the group that we gave money to? The United Methodist yes. Committee on Encore. Relief. Encore. Exactly. And so when you guys raised almost $2,000, what happened? We got to paint. We got to paint Miss Miss Jen. You got to paint. Yeah, you got to paint me, Miss Jen, and Miss Allison, yes. Pastor Joel, yes. and Mr. Eric. Was that fun? Yes. Yeah? To me it wasn't because I wasn't there. Oh, well, yeah. I but, missed it too. But you guys see the video. Alright, so did you guys have fun at Vacation Bible School? Yes. yes. Yeah, was it good? Yes. All right, look excited. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Only one who speaks to him, I am the friendliest of friends of God.
Hi, my name is Krishan and this summer I was afforded the awesome opportunity to go to Costa Rica and serve with Strong Missions. For those of you that don't know, Strong Missions is a Christian-based uh, organization that assists the people of Costa Rica um, with all the necessities they need to live a healthy life. While in Costa Rica, um, we aided in building a room that would eventually be used to um, have a feeding program for our kids who most of them, it's the only meal that they'll get for a day. We also got to visit with a few local people and we got to hear their story about their struggle and how they ended up coming out victorious. And we also got to visit a church service, which was really awesome. For most of us, English is the only language we know, so to just be able to experience that and if, uh, the language not even be an issue. Um, the most impactful part of this trip for me was actually when we got to participate in the feeding program and we got to interact with the kids. It was amazing and it was definitely an experience that I will always remember. To just see the joy on their faces and their smiles and to see them sing and dance and just to be so excited because most of them don't have that much. So for me, when I came back, it made me realize that we must be thankful for, for what we do have because most of them don't have a lot but they find that joy anyway so for us to have all that we do have and to just just to always be thankful for what we have and so this trip was definitely something that I would do again if I could. Hi I'm Emily Hernandez and I'm Audrey Engel and we just came back from a two-week experience called TYA for Texas Youth Academy. At Texas Youth Academy, we have small groups, we do missions projects, we have um, plenary, which is lectures with like theologians and professors. Mm -hmm. And um, we did this one mission that really stuck out to us called Church Under the Bridge. And Church Under the Bridge is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's church outdoors under the bridge for people who live outdoors to come and experience Christ and all his opportunities that he can reach out to them. And uh, like local churches come and they bring in food, another church comes and they bring in a band for worship, and then everybody can just come and talk and have fellowship and have conversations with people about their experiences or really whatever they want. And usually on mission trips, we're used to bringing the food or bringing clothes to people and stuff, mm -hmm. but this one we were just there to be one-on-one, -on -one, to talk with people. We didn't bring anything with us. Just to bring ourselves. So just bring ourselves, yeah. show love to everyone, and it was amazing. We had one guy at our table that we got to talk with, and he just told us so many stories. He made me cry, and he cried, and it was emotional, but it was amazing. And he just was so excited to share his testimony. Right. He was called the Testimony Man. And so he was a lot of fun, and he had some great stories, and everyone that he'd end with, and he'd say, that's why I know that our, my God loves me, and that's how I know that he's there for me. So he was very inspirational, he was awesome. I had the exact same experience with a man named James. Uh, James actually taught me more than I thought I was going to teach him. Like, I sat down and talked to him, and immediately he was telling me all about God's grace and all about God's love that he's experienced and how he doesn't even know how he was still here on this earth. And the only reason that he was was because God had his hand on him. And he honestly, just like your testimony guy, he got, he got made me so emotional because I was like, wow, this man is living outdoors, and he has so much God in his heart. Like, he really notices God in the world more so than I'd honestly say that I do sometimes. And so something, super inspirational. Yeah. Something that affected me is that one of the tables, it was some people and they were just like you and me and they lived in a normal house and everything but they felt more comfortable going to the church yeah. under the bridge because their child was loud and sometimes disruptive in church and they felt mm -hmm. like they were too judged in a church that they'd go to yeah. the church under the bridge because they felt so welcome. Because everybody's and really welcome. It's there. an amazing, it was awesome. Yeah, different cultures, different races, no matter how short, how tall you are, how wealthy, how poor you are, I guess, it really doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome and it was so loving. Like I cannot express to you how loving this entire environment was. It was truly so amazing and it touched me. Like I walk away and I'm still thinking, wow, I wonder what James is doing right now. I should pray for him, hoping that he's, you know, healthy and having a good day, you know, so it's really yeah. awesome. And we'd love to thank uh, Cypress UMC for being able to help us go. And for yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, isn't it amazing how a man can find himself alone?
fall into the darkness for an answer that he's never known. Yeah, isn't it amazing how a God can take a broken man? Yeah, let him find fortune, let him ruin it with his own two hands. Hi, my name is Emma Orr, and I was able to go to UM Army this year. It's the high school mission trip, and we stayed at White Rock UMC. And at UM Army, you get split up into different work teams, and you're able to get different projects, and you get to meet your homeowners, and you get to help rebuild their homes. Um, my work team, it was a small team with five people, and we had a pretty big project. Um, our homeowner, Miss Natalie, needed siding replaced on her house and her garage. She needed it scraped and painted, and she needed deck boards replaced. She needed her deck painted, her front porch painted, and a new handrail built. And she needed her garage door put in. It was a pretty big project, but with the help of another team, we were able to finish it. And Miss Natalie was so excited and so happy and it was just an altogether great experience. The theme for UM Army this year was how to be a light bearer and it was a way for us to learn how to shine the light of Christ. And I thought when I went on this mission trip that I would be the one to shine the light of Christ. But when I met my homeowner, Miss Natalie, it was clear that she was the one who was shining her light and she actually taught me how to shine mine. Natalie, She's about in her 70s or 80s. She's pretty old, and she um, she was a little hard-headed when it came to us working. Um, she refused to go inside. She wanted to help, and she would not let us be out there by ourselves. She grabbed a thing of paint. She grabbed a couple paintbrushes, and she painted a good half of the house without our help because she wanted to be a part of helping rebuild her own home. She was able to show us what it means to really shine our light and show love to others. She welcomed us and it's pretty hard to accept the fact that you need help, but she was able to do that and she was able to help us and we were able to help her. And she taught us that we don't need material possessions. We don't need to be accepted by others as long as we are who we are and we are able to share the love of Christ. And she's one of the happiest people that I've ever met. And she was able to share her love and her laughter and just all her stories of her life. And it was a really memorable experience and I will never forget the light that she shined on me. To the rock on which he stands He looks back at the crowd He looks down at his hands And he says I am the difference maker Oh I am Difference maker Oh I am The only one that speaks to him And I am The friendliest of friends of God Hi, my name is Tess. I recently volunteered at a camp named Camp Blessing, which is a camp for kids and adults with disabilities where they can go and enjoy camp like an everyday kid. The theme of the week was joy. And we learned that you can have temporary joy through food and sleep and everything, but that's going to go away. The only way you can find true joy is by accepting accepting the love and of our Savior Jesus Christ. It's the only way you can get true joy throughout your life. I experienced joy through helping the campers and serving. I My position was a barnstormer, so I served the campers and I was with the campers some of the time, but not the complete time. Uh, when I came to the camp originally, I thought, okay, I'm going to be a barnstormer. I'm not very important, the campers won't care about me, they'd rather be with their counselor, but actually reflecting back on my week, my campers, they told me that 
I was their favorite and that they didn't know they probably wouldn't have had as good of a time if I wasn't there. So it was really a great week. I mean, I am on the fence about nearly everything I've seen And I have felt the fire get put out by too much gasoline We're all strangers passing through a place in town Afternoon, life is but a vision in a window that we're peeking through Helpless conversation with a man who says he cares a lot It's a passive confrontation about who might throw a punch or not Hi, my name is Shelby and I attended Camp Blessing this summer and I was a junior counselor, which means I wasn't one-on-one -on -one with one of the campers, but I was um, with a cabin, so I got to um, be with all the campers and just hang out with them. And I experienced joy a lot the week I went, but one of the biggest ways that I saw joy was through one of the campers, Diana. Um, she was in a wheelchair, but even though some things were way more difficult for her to do, she never didn't have a smile on her face and she would just light up during worship time or whenever we went down the zip line or whatever and she didn't let her disabilities or issues hinder her happiness and joy and so i had a really great time um, at camp blessing and i can't wait for next year is but a vision in a window that we're peeking through Helpless conversation with a man who says he cares a lot It's a passive confrontation about who might throw a punch or not We are all transgressors, we're all sinners, we're all astronauts So if you're beating death, then raise your hand But shut up if you're not Cause I am the difference maker Oh, I am the only one who speaks to him my name is Grant. I was I was at Instant Race Camp, which was a camp for youth going to sixth and seventh grade. And um, we that week we learned that God's grace is instant and that He loves you unconditionally, no matter what you do. So we decided to share that with other people by going and helping them. For instance, we went to a food bank and um, helped pack stuff into like boxes for them to hand out. We went to a little apartment complex and set up. Um, little games for the kids to play so they wouldn't be bored and um, we also went to a park and cleaned off a trail so we could walk on it again. Overall it was actually a pretty fun week helping others. I am the friendliest of friends of God I am the difference maker Oh I am only one who speaks to him, and I am the friendliest of friends of God.